Hello everyone, my name is Thomas and I'm very excited to be here today to present to you our new virtual instrument, Saxophone Explorations. It's a sublime, intense and evolving library made for contact player in close collaboration with virtuoso saxophonist and synthesis expert Jay Reynolds. In this video, we will focus on the functionality of the interface. For a detailed audio demo, check the main presentational video. For those of you who have used our previous instruments such as Super Bowl, Abstract, Brute Flute and others, you'll be familiar with the layout of our interface and some of the tools available to further shape your sound. We have carefully designed it so that at any one time you have access to a combination of two pages. These can be opened by clicking the dedicated page tabs at the top of the interface. There is Global and the Gator on the left, an envelope and effects on the right. Now let's take a look at the interface in more detail. The tune determines the tuning of the samples and moves in increments of a semitone. To move in increments of its sense, hold Alt on Windows or Option on Mac, Command click returns to default position. There's expression control. Then we have stereo width. This can be used to widen the stereo field or completely fall down to mono. Blur adds roundness to the sound. And gloss adds some bite and air. Character switch is another useful tool to have. Essentially what it does, when it's turned off, it allows you to blend between dry and affected modular sample layers using the mod wheel. And if it's on, the level of the affected samples will be determined by how hard you hit the keys. The harder you play, the more aggressive the treatment is. This is a really good way to add some intensity to your tracks. Okay, so next is the gator. We are extremely excited to present to you this multifunctional gating sequencer, which unlocks an enormous amount of creative paths to explore the sonic ideas. Gator comes with a large amount of presets categorized by note duration. Having said that, it's very easy to create your own patterns and save them for future use. So let's have a look in more detail. There are a total of 32 steps and each of them can be attenuated independently. To further shape the sequence, you can adjust the length of each step, add swing, change direction of the sequence, shorten, lengthen, or even shift the whole pattern left to right in circles. On top of that, there are two drawing modes which allow the user to draw any shape into the sequencer, or if you feel lucky, hit a randomizer button and start from there. Now let's have a look at it in more detail. An on-off switch is located at the top left. If the gator is set to on, it will begin stepping when you press the key. And it will stop stepping when you release the key, plus the release time that's set in the ADSR. If the gator is set to off, then you can activate it by pressing the gator key switch. Using a key switch, a more complex performance is possible as gating becomes part of your expression as and when you wish. This combined with all the sounds that come in this instrument creates infinite sonic possibilities. Now let's have a look at presets. If you made a pattern you like, just hit save. This will take you to a new window where you can select a folder where to save. We highly recommend saving your own patterns in the user folder. This way, with the future updates, you don't have to worry about losing them. As I mentioned before, the maximum step count is 32 steps, but you can adjust. Click the last active step above the step attenuator and drag left or right to decrease or increase the number of steps. When the gator is running, it will wrap around to the beginning after it finishes the last step. The gator will always begin stepping from the first column, depending on stepping direction. Now let's have a closer look at a step. 
so a gator step provides a dual function. Users can set the amount of attenuation per step as well as length of the individual step. Here's a cool tip. You can merge several steps together by turning their lengths to 100%. Okay, now let's have a look at the remaining settings here. Rhythm tree, which determines the duration of each step. Global length, it increases and decreases the step length for all the steps. Strength, step strength, global step attenuation. Swing, determines the amount of swing to apply to the pattern steps. Higher swing values cause every other step to be delayed. Next is step edit and draw curve mode. In step edit mode, you can set up step length attenuation for individual steps by clicking and dragging. Alt click and drag will snap to 0, 25, 50, 75, and 100%. And in draw mode, the player can draw patterns by clicking and dragging over the entire grid step area. Then you have randomizer. Throw the dice, you might get lucky. Randomizer sets a random pattern, but step lengths will remain unchanged. With the reverse button, you can reverse the direction of the gator steps right to left, left to right, or bounce left, right, left, right. Sequence shift, shift the sequence left and right by one step. Values at the extreme ends wrap around when shifted. If you click reset, the gear will reset to its original state at patch load. And if you want a clean slate to start from scratch, click clear. Okay, so let's have a look at the envelope tab. The functionality of this tab is quite self-explanatory. It provides access to amplifier, filter, and pitch ADSRs. Filter ADSR is used to control filter behavior upon each keystroke. With the help of the filter envelope, you can determine the time for filter to open when you hit the key and the time at which it will close after you release the key. Pitch ADSR can be used to control sample speech upon each keystroke. This is a classic technique used in synthesis to bend the pitch as you play it. It's a pretty cool way to warp your samples while keeping playability and performance intact. Filter and AMP ADSRs can be linked using the button over here. If active, changes to the filter controls will be mirrored by the AMP controls and vice versa. All right, cool. Next part is the exciting one. It's the Effects tab. The Effects tab features a compact set of controls to shape and transform your sounds. First, you have Filter section, which contains three independent filters that can be used at the same time. Low pass, band pass, and high pass. When on, filter button will light up. To access filter settings, click on the type of the filter you want to adjust. Next, tape saturation control. It allows multiple saturation types, but only one can be used at the same time. The grade determines the level of degradation effect. Effect is switched off if knob is turned all the way to the left and automatically switches on as the knob is turned to the right. Next, we have a really cool convolution reverb with a 79 custom impulse responses covering vast array of designed, experimental, and natural spaces. Next is a classic delay. It comes with this toggle button, which allows you to sync your delay to your DAW tempo or have it free roaming. And lastly, it's the traditional chorus with the amount, speed, and depth controls. All right, and there you have it, saxophone explorations. You can hear this library has a huge array of fascinating sounds and textures, which will take your music production to the next level. And remember, this library was made for a contact player. It's a free sampler that you can download for free on the Native Instruments website. Head over to soniccinema.com for more information about the library. There you will find more audio demos, detailed description of the instrument, interview with the man of the hour, Jay Reynolds himself, and many other things. If you've got any questions, you can post them in the comment section below or reach out directly via the website. Please follow us on Facebook and Instagram. 
Thanks for watching and see you all very soon. Bye.